Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale duo figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at both Shadow Moon and Black Sun based off their appearance in Kamen Rider Black Sun. Now initially I swore up and down I would never review these figures on the channel. What changed my mind? Well, I'll let you know in just a second. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys review goes live on the channel. Okay, let's cut right to the chase. The reason why I'm reviewing these two now when I said I wouldn't initially is because I watched the show on Amazon Prime and I really liked it. It's kind of like The Boys meets X-Men. It's The Boys R18 level violence, badass action and sick looking outfits. But there's a deeper meaning to it as well. They're fighting for a reason. There's discrimination going on against a certain part of the Japanese population called Kaijin. And they can transform into creatures. They have abilities, kind of like X-Men's mutants. I know I'm not really selling it to you. Just go ahead and check out the show if you want to watch something epic. If you've already seen it, you know how good this is. As for the box art, doing this lens flare for the solar eclipse in the background in red for Black Sun and green for Shadow Moon. That's a nice touch. I really like how it looks and it's metallic too. We've got the Kamen Rider Black Sun logos on opposing sides and meeting in the middle, some actual images of the figures themselves. If only they'd cut them off dead center, then these two would have been two halves of a whole. That would have been really cool. It still looks fantastic, but I would have preferred that, I think. And up top, a special edition sticker. On the side of the boxes, we do have the rest of that solar eclipse in the vibrant colors, whether it's red or green, depending on which Kamen Rider we're looking at. Their names down below, the show logo in metallic silver foil, and just a little bit of the rest of the image spilling over from the front cover. Whereas on the other sides, we still have the image from the front cover, but this time it's the rest of their helmets. And the metallic sections, they are nice and metallic and shiny. They have also moved the Kamen Rider logo down below, just so we're not putting any artwork over their big bug eyes. The reason why they look like bugs is because to turn a person into a kaijin, you have to use like a creature or an animal in conjunction with a special stone. And for these two, they used grasshoppers. That's why they look a little bit bug-like. They've used the corresponding color scheme from their eyes when they light up for the strips around the back, also done in a metallic finish, red and green. Love the pops of color back here. We also have a bunch of warnings and legal info. Now, technically, these two are still on pre-order, but at ACGHK, Hot Toys did release 100 of these special edition versions. They don't often do that for conventions. If they're going to release a convention exclusive, they usually just drop the convention exclusive. For these two, they only released 100, with the rest of them coming sometime later. We do have an open window showcasing the figures inside, their names on the side of the box, and around the back, once again, love the colors here. There's a nice glossy finish over the top, and we've got some images of their transformation belts. I'm actually trying something new in this review. I've already taken off all of the plastic, the little bits and pieces that go on their arms, legs, bits of foam here and there, just because there was so darn much of it. It was obscuring pretty much the entire outfit. First in hand impressions? Dude, these two look so freaking good. Kamen Rider Black Sun feels nice and sturdy. Love the deep, rich black color on his outfit. Then for Shadow Moon, this guy feels even heftier than Black Sun. And the metallic finish, oh, it is poppin'. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of their accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything they come with. To try and make this as simple as possible, Shadow Moon's accessories, Black Sun's accessories. Starting off with Black Sun's display base first, I like that the shape is consistent for both of them. It's just the print that's different. For Black Sun, you've got the show logo, and top and bottom, you've got the red solar eclipse, just like the box art. They have made the surface glossy. Normally, I'd worry about the figures sliding around. However, with these figures, their feet are almost this rubbery plastic. They stick to the surface rather than sliding around, so that's fine with me. Then around the front, Black Sun. Up top, they have gone for a flight pole with a spring-loaded waist clamp. I personally would have preferred a crotch grabber. 
Or better yet, why not just include both options? Why do you force us to have to go with the flight pole? I just don't understand. The reason why I don't like it is it sticks up further than the height of the figure, so this stands out in the background. And the waist clamps, they're just dangerous. They dig into the figure's outfits over time. The best solution that I found isn't a very good one. You have to unscrew it. This piece is just sitting there ugly as heck around the back. And the figure is not supported. And their antennae, they look quite fragile. I would not want to have them toppling over in the display. The print is great, just like Black Suns, although this is green rather than red. Then around the front for Shadow Moon's display base, what do you know, his nameplate says Shadow Moon. I also like the textured finish on the nameplate. Special edition accessories, they're these one-to-one -one replicas of the green and red kingstones. I use the word replica very loosely because these, they kinda look pretty terrible. The moulding is very soft, they're not optically clear enough to actually look like gemstones convincingly. You also have this seam down the bottom and some little bubbles and a magnet that's visible. They also don't light up, all they do is just sit together. Then I guess you can pop them on the display base, although why would you because these are 1 to 1 scale, not 1 6 scale. A very weird choice for the special edition bonus. I would have preferred some body parts of the Creation King as morbid as that sounds. His heart, his head, his arm, dealer's choice really, you just could have used them as set dressing to set the scene. You do get the Satan Saber, however, there's a decent level of leather grain texture sculpted into the surface of the sheath. There's also some dirt and grime at the bottom. Then for the Saber itself, you've got these little tassels. And the blade is this gorgeous shiny metallic red. You also have some detail on the edge. Unfortunately, it isn't made of metal. This is plastic. They've also added some schmutz, some dirt and grime around the base of the hilt. I do like that they included the only weapon that can actually kill the Creation King, although it was broken in the show, so I would have liked to have seen a broken version too. And no, I don't want to break it myself. You do get two versions of the hilt for the Kamen Rider's swords, but they're not really swords, are they? They're more body parts. These were their grasshopper legs before they ripped them off. Now, the difference in the hilts is kind of marginal. You do have a couple of extra spikes on this one. To switch them out, it's relatively straightforward. It's the same on both of them, by the way. You literally just pull off the hilt, then plug the new one on. And the tolerances here are super tight. There is no gap at all. There is also this light wash in the crevices on the black sword, just helping all of this sculpted detail stand out. The Shadow Moon sword, because it's this bright, shiny, metallic silver, they've gone with a black wash. It pretty much just does the same thing. It helps all of the sculpted details stand out. Switching out the hilt here, if you find it doesn't go in all the way, just grab it, push it a little bit more, and then you can see that gap all but disappears. This looks completely seamless. Black Sun is the only one to come with a swap out Henshin belt. Henshin, by the way, translates to transform, so transformation belt, if you will. If you are trying to open the panels on this particular belt with the metallic gold in the crevices, I don't think it's supposed to open. These really don't want to. Whereas the one that's on him moves a lot more freely. You'll see what I mean a little bit later. My favourite little detail here is the dial. Having this printed with the needle in there and having it so teeny tiny, then with this glossy kind of cover over the top. Yeah, I love the way this thing looks. When it comes to hands, they've been pretty sneaky. They've used the same moulds across both of them. So you get the same gestures, they're just painted differently. For Shadow Moon, they're this gorgeous metallic silver with the contrasting black. And then for Black Sun, they're all black. You do get the ribbing detail sculpted in for the palm, the long fingernails, and the spikes around the back. Just be careful when you're trying to install the hands. I'm not worried about the spikes breaking because they're rubbery plastic. I'm more worried about you stabbing yourself when you're trying to grab these. So like I said, be careful. I also don't really understand the array of gestures. Why do we only have one sword gripping hand? Both of these guys come with swords, and it would have been cool to be able to use the gripping hand on both sides. If you want to have him gripping the sword with his right hand, the dominant hand usually, you have to use this pointing gesture, which is just a weird choice in my opinion. What we are going to do now though is get Black Sun and Shadow Moon themselves out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Being a relatively new fan of the show, I did not expect these to hit as hard as they have. Oh, but they have. I am super impressed. Are they perfect? 
No, nothing in this world truly is, but they're close, and that's what matters to me. The proportions are spot on for both of them, Black Sun is taller and lankier, whereas Shadow Moon is a little bit more bulky, and just visually speaking, from an outfit perspective, these two are very striking, they look super interesting. Even if you haven't seen the show and you want something super cool and you're a fan of Sentai or the original version of this show, I don't think you can do much better than this. These two, oh, they stand out. Now, I'm not a fan of some of the choices they've made, like the thin plastic antennae, we'll touch on that in just a second, and some of the material choices for the outfit. I get it, they were limited by how this had to look, they had to make the choices they did to get these as accurate as possible, Still, they are a little bit stiff, which does mean that posability can be a chore. Then the USB-C cable plugging into the back of the transformation belt. A neat idea in theory, I do have thoughts on how they could have improved that though. Everything else I'm fine with, especially being able to take off the grasshopper legs they're magnetically attached and then use them as swords, exactly like these two do in the show. Kicking things off up close and personal with Black Sun's head sculpt. The best part about the Kamen Rider designs in the show Black Sun is that everything is very organic and very creature-like. It looks less like a suit and more like this is just the way the dude looks. And that works in Hot Toys' favour because they don't really have to focus too heavily on proportions and on a realistic head sculpt. They nailed it though, there's a lot of this grainy texture on the surface, the bug eyes are huge. Then the mandibles around the front, they look awesome. The only complaint I have is, he does bite Shadow Moon, and I would have loved to have seen a swap out mouth with his little teeth in there, so if you want to have them battling and have Black Sun bite Shadow Moon, you totally can. Unfortunately, they decided not to do that, they kept it relatively simple. Now the lines around the front, they are UV reflective, we'll get to all of the orange stuff in just a second. But the antenna, I do want to focus on the antennae, but just a moment. Unfortunately, they are not rubbery plastic. These are solid, brittle plastic. They are very, very thin and you get no replacements in the box, so please be extremely careful with them. I do particularly like how it looks as though the helmet or the head, because it's not a suit, it's actually him, is multiple segments of armour that are under one another to make up the overall design, the shape of Kamen Rider Black Sun's head. Something about the way the head is shaped, how it slopes down and tucks into the collar, kinda reminds me of his regular Kaijin transformation. That's not a bad thing. In fact, Hot Toys, if you want to double dip and make both looks for both of these guys, I reckon more than a few collectors would be in. I would totally cop them. Now the armor back here is more of a rigid, rubbery plastic, I like how it flares out at the collar. The grasshopper legs with the spikes up on top are magnetic, we'll get there. Then all of the sinewy detail underneath the armor plating, that is rubbery fabric. They needed to go that way to maintain detail and flexibility. There is this subtle gloss over the top of all of this texture. It goes left and right, goes up and down, and the word I keep coming back to to describe all this is organic. It looks almost a little bit nasty, especially for the hard armor pieces. Having all of these uneven undulations and all of this texture, yeah, it does look very bug-like. He's also pretty skinny. Around the front, he slims down a lot in this transformation. That works. It shows a big difference between the normal Kaijin look and this one. Now you can remove his grasshopper legs. In the show, these actually get ripped off and it's very gory. He rips it off, then he flicks it out and it becomes a sword. It's one of the most badass things I've seen in a while. And he does have the mark that Aoi does out of blood up here on his chest plate. My pronunciation I know was terrible. He does have some pops of metallic orange here and there and when you hit that with the UV light, which we will try, it absolutely glows. If only there was a way to have a black light permanently on in the collection and not damage the other figures in the display. Most of these armor plates are held on with Velcro, so if you want to dial in a pose, then pop these armor plates back on, you totally can. He's got multiple spikes working their way down his arm, they are quite prickly, so please be careful. And then we get to the transformation belt. You have two different options for Black Sun, whereas with Shadow Moon you just have one. Now you can facilitate his transformation gimmick if you choose to, 
you can slide out the various parts and pieces, and then you can spring open these pieces in the middle. Now, I know I'm doing it in reverse in the show, the centerpiece closes, and then all the bits and pieces close up after that. In fact, let's do it. So he says his thing, he does his pose, these little bits and pieces close up, then the top ones slide in, then the bottom ones close up, and there's even this little dial on the surface. You can actually take this off after he's done his transformation and plug this one in. I did try and move these little parts and pieces, but as far as I'm aware, these are all fixed in position. This one is just for show. His legs are very sleek looking. He does have this armor plating around the front, working its way around the back. He's got two individual booty plates. Then for the armor plating on the sides, this almost looks like a chrysalis of some kind. For the undersuit, it is that softer rubbery material. It isn't super soft and sticky though. I don't think it's going to stick to itself if you have him in a pose over time. Coming down to his shins, some spikes, a little bit softer than the spikes up here on the gauntlets. These are huge. And he does have his individual toes. Don't forget, this guy is a grasshopper after all. Normally, I don't go in for the UV reflective paint. And here, I don't really either. I just like it. When you hit it with the UV torch, it glows beautifully. You just can't use it all the time. Unless you have some kind of custom setup where you can, that would be cool. But I can't, unfortunately. The eyes even glow a little bit when you hit them with the UV torch. But we don't want them to glow blue, we want them to glow red. So to do that, and I'm just now noticing this, that is absolutely disgusting, because don't forget, this is where we pulled off one of his grasshopper legs, and yes, it's there on the other side too, so a little bit of gore is present. You want to bring in the USB-C cable, which isn't included, I might add. So plugging this in, Oh yes, his eyes glow red and his belt turns on. You can switch this out if you'd like to go back to the standard belt if you so choose. And even though on camera it's coming off orange, in person it is a very vibrant red, both for the eyes and also for the belt. Now that we have the LEDs turned on for the eyes, you can see all of that honeycomb pattern. There is this almost grill detail underneath the lenses, and that adds so much depth. Well, moving on to Shadow Moon, I know how to start this segment. Let's do the transformation. So he says Henshin, he does the pose, then all of these little pieces, they actually close at the same time. And in the show, this middle section rotates. In 1-6 scale, it doesn't. It's actually a static piece. And unlike Black Sun, like I've already said, he doesn't come with a switch out belt. He only has one option. While Black Sun is my favorite character in the show, my favorite look for a Kamen Rider, it's got to be Nobuhiko in this look. Shadow Moon, he was just destined to be a figure. Look at this thing. It is beastly. We've got washers in all of the sculpt work, and the sculpt work itself is impressive. Usually when they do this soft rubbery style armor, it's just soft all the way around, not just in feel. This guy isn't, he's got prickles everywhere, the armor itself is very nice and sturdy. Starting off with his head sculpt, super mean, the V taper for these antennae is even more flared than Black Sun, making him look angrier than ever. The eyes are slightly smaller, and going with this metallic silver with this warm wash over the top, and all of the black line work, and the black mouth plate, with the pops of green, Something about this just speaks to me, and I cannot wait to light this guy up by plugging the USB-C cable in. Even his grasshopper legs are huge. They're magnetized around the back, and they still have that gross little severed stump look under there. I can't believe they went to that level of detail, but they did. The armor plating is very shiny and reflective all the way around. Then the bodysuit does look very similar to Black Sun's, yet for Nobuhiko, it's a little bit less shiny. Now the little USB-C port is protected by this cover, which is magnetic. I didn't actually notice that with Black Sun. Around the front, you can remove one of these. I'm pretty sure the accurate side to remove is this one. So now it's an asymmetrical design, and it's accurate to the show. Because once they remove these and use them as swords, they ain't growing back. So when they do their next transformation, these pieces are still missing. So if you wanted to maybe take them both off and go for a very clean look for Shadow Moon, totally doable. His shoulder pads, all of this stuff is movable, you can flex it around and that's great for posing. The undersuit does feel a little bit stiff, just like with Black Sun. It doesn't feel like that sticky material, so I don't think it's going to stick to itself, but it might fight you when it comes to posing. You do have the spikes on the gauntlets, and I dig these straps. 
I don't know how it works, seeing as though this is supposed to be an organic thing that's morphed out of him. Still, it looks cool, and all of the scratching and pitting on the surface for the shoulder pads, the bicep guards, and all the other bits and pieces, it comes together beautifully. I think I know why I prefer Shadow Moon. When you think about it, with Black Sun, everything is black. He's just black head to toe, and while that seems cool, it does tend to drown out some of the detail. This guy, he's silver, he's gunmetal, he's metallic green, he's got this bluish grey undersuit and a pop of blue on his belt. Nothing is drowned out here, you can see all of the detail. Even on his booty plate, I didn't realise there was this honeycomb battle damage texture, and this is the same plate I'm pretty sure as Black Sun. Down below, these are huge, you've got these massive spikes back here, and you also have more of the gunmetal strapping. Still not sure where that came from, don't care, looks awesome. On the underside of his feet, and I didn't mention this with Black Sun, there is some sculpted in tread down below. There isn't quite as much UV reflective paint on Shadow Moon. Still enough to help him pop for figure photography. The belt will glow if you hit it with a torch. The gauntlets up underneath the shoulder pads, this one works the best. Coming down to above the feet, some green here. And the lines on the head sculpt, they will glow as well. I don't really care about any of that. What I want to see is the USB-C powered light up effect. You plug him in around the back, just like Black Sun, and oh yes, I can already tell this looks sick. The eyes glow this ominous green, and the transformation belt, that looks white on camera. In person, it is a super solid saturated green. You can also see all of that detail in the lenses now, that normally is hidden. And the best part about the way these guys work in the show is their eyes and their belts, they aren't lit up all the time, so it's not like you have to have these guys powered. It's only when they want to do an attack or they transform, that's when these turn on. I still would have liked to have had the USB-C cable plugged into the base, then have a copper coil in there and transfer power through the base into the figures. That way you don't have to have a cable plugged in just above their ass all the time. It works, it's just more cumbersome when it comes to posing. And cable management. Oh, these two? They look so freaking good together. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, Kamen Rider's Black Sun and Shadow Moon. Now, if you count the antennae, Black Sun is a little bit taller. That's just because they're not quite as flared as Shadow Moon's, making him look more heroic, less mean and menacing. I guess it makes sense when you factor in his slimness and his lankiness. Shadow Moon makes up for it in bulk. He's got these huge grasshopper legs, he's got the strapped on panels on his shoulder pads and his biceps and his gauntlets and his thighs and his shins, not to mention the massive spikes around the back. There's not much in it anyway, even factoring in the antennae, he's only ever so slightly shorter than Black Sun. I do not want to give you the wrong idea. If you've not seen the show, Kamen Rider is not Power Rangers. One is a kid's show, and the other is pure blood-soaked violence. It is an awesome show. I still love me Power Rangers, it's just not quite as hard-hitting as Kamen Rider Black Sun. Still. Sentai? That's where Kamen Rider originated from. And back in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, there was a Masked Rider crossover. So if you did want to display your Kamen Rider Black Sun figures alongside your 3-0 Power Rangers, this is what that looks like. Going over articulation on both of these guys, I'm going to be so careful with the antennae. The last thing either of us want is to snap those little suckers. They are super thin pieces of plastic. So to avoid that, grab the head sculpt like this, not like this. There's a ball joint at the base of the neck, and underneath the head sculpt, there's a double ball peg. Looking forward to there, looking back to there, you also get swivel and pivot side to side. The shoulder pads are pretty flexible so they'll get out of the way, and they're attached with Velcro, so the worst thing that can happen is they'll just pop off on you, then you can do the pose and pop them right back on. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back on soft ratchets, and there's a butterfly joint at the shoulder. It hinges forward and back, plus up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow on ratchets, going further than I expected given this little bicep cover, 
and for the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. The torso crunches forward and back just a touch. Don't forget, there is some electronic stuff going on in the inside there. You also get swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there on ratchets. They will go out to there. This armor plate does collide with the rest of the body, so bear that in mind. You do get swivel at the upper thigh. Ratcheted double bend at the knee going past 90. And then for the ankles... Simple enough, really. It's a double ball peg. Good for forward and back swivel and plenty of ankle tilt. Seeing as though Shadow Moon is bulkier than Black Sun, I am curious to see if his articulation is better, worse, or about the same. Starting off with his head sculpt, there's a ball joint at the base of the neck and a double ball peg up underneath the exact same setup. Looking forward to there, further forward than Black Sun, interesting. Going back to there, you also get swivel and pivot side to side. These pieces look like they'd get in your way. I don't think they're going to. There's a massive cutout around the top, so there's a big air gap, and they extend in around the front if you're bringing the arms around the front. I don't think they're going to be a massive deal. And you can take them off if you so choose. It's entirely up to you. The shoulder pads are still attached with Velcro. The arms will go up to there. They will go forward and back on ratchets. There's a butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going past 90, also on ratchets. Then for the wrist peg, a hinge and swivel. The torso crunches further forward than Black Sun. That's very surprising. Going back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there on ratchets. And seeing as though his thigh armor kind of swooshes around the back, it doesn't get in the way as much as Black Sun's does. Then you get swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee on ratchets, watch out for this piece, just rotate it, then you can go the full way, past 90. And lastly, same thing for the ankles, a double ball peg, forward and back, swivel, and so much ankle tilt. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is Hot Toys went USB-C with the power, and they saw fit not to include a USB-C cable. So not only do you have to buy both figures, but you also have to go out and hunt down a cable. That's just not good enough in my opinion. These figures both should have come with cables. The second annoying thing is, whose idea was it to make these out of thin, brittle plastic, not robbery plastic, and include no spares? If you so much as look at these the wrong way, they're going to break. The third annoying thing is the Kingstones. I like having life-size replicas of them. They just look a bit shit, though. You've got this seam line down the bottom on both. They're this gummy looking plastic. You can see the magnets at the bottom and they don't light up. If they had some way of opening this up, popping an LED in there and then when you combine them, the Creation King gets to decide if he will choose you as his successor. Yeah, okay, that would have been a cool feature. But right now, they're hunks of robbery plastic that just sit together. The first cool thing is being able to take off his grasshopper legs and then have him hold it as a sword like he does in the show. That's dope. The second cool thing, while I don't usually go in for this UV reflective nonsense, this time I kind of like it, especially when you're not using the LEDs. You can hit these green accents, the transformation belt, and his head sculpt. So if you do have some kind of UV black light set up in your display, this guy's going to pop. The third cool thing is you can recreate the transformation sequence with the belts. Not just for Black Sun, but also with Shadow Moon. With Black Sun, however, you do get the switch out version of his transformation belt. With the added orange paint applications on the inside, and the LED still passes through this one too. Wrapping up on Kamen Rider's Black Sun and Shadow Moon based off their appearance in Kamen Rider Black Sun. These two are phenomenal figures. If you're a fan of the show, or you're a fan of the original, or you just like Sentai and Masked Rider and Kamen Rider in general, what the hell are you waiting for? Don't just take my word for it. You've seen these two figures throughout the course of this review. They are very special. Are they perfect? Like we said earlier, no. There are a couple of things, like the thin antennae I don't love, and I think they could have done better with the light-up feature some kind of copper coil in the base, you plug it in with the USB-C cable, then the power is transferred through the figure, so you don't have a cable hanging out of its ass. Everything else, I'm really happy with. The proportions on both, stunning. They're visually interesting. They're striking. They're well sculpted. They're well painted. And the articulation is good enough for me. It's not going to satisfy everyone. I know that. You probably know that based off the articulation segment. 
I reckon you're still going to be able to pull off some badass looking poses with these two. The transformation belts are a nice touch being able to open them, and the UV reflective paint, while I still think it's a bit of a gimmick, it's there if you want it. If not, it doesn't get in your way. So at the end of this, what I'm trying to say is these two figures are some of Hot Toys' best work in a very long time. I am thoroughly impressed, and I can't wait to see what they do next for Kamen Rider. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com, link for that is in the description below, they have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button, if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe, we'll catch you in the next video.